right. So now that we've made a character, good, uh, good little recap right here. <clears throat> and here we go. It's been a few weeks since the battle, since the battle, and the reporting by Jeff Flotsam has resulted in mass support for the Atlantis Rangers. As a result, more than a few people have attempted to volunteer for the force. These people are usually rejected due to the suits not responding to them. However, our heroes find themselves talking to a new applicant, and little do they know that this one will be accepted into the fold. So, how, where we start here, we'll set our establishing setting right here. There is a headquarters. There is a headquarters for the Atlantean Rangers, and you guys have been now uh, set up there for a couple weeks now. You guys know know your way around the place now, and you've been turning away applicants because, like I said, the suits have not been responding to these new applicants. So we like fully defeated that first. Yeah, it's gone. Component. It dead. Okay, and this is like time has passed. Yes, time I know you explain now. this, but I zoned out really hard. Yeah, I think it's the ADHD. Well, I get to okay. So today I was at my doctor, and I was like, kind of meekly, like, you know, I just. I don't know if the dose can be upped on this because like, I feel like it hasn't like maybe I'm a little more focused, but it's not dramatic. Cause I know when people have taken like expensive medications like Vyvanse and Natterol, they're like, wow, it blew my mind. And I took this weird knockoff medication. And so I was kind of like, all right, I, I don't know. Like I'm really hoping this will work cause I don't want to spend a bunch of money, you know? And uh, my doctor was just like, oh, yeah, you're on like a little bitch dose. Like, we'll up you. And I was like, oh, well, fuck. Like, no wonder. So starting tomorrow, boy, howdy, am I going to be focused, which does not help us today. It does not. But yes, uh, so you guys have been there for a couple weeks now, and you've been turning away new applicants because you have to basically try to make them match with the suit. And it's just, it's not working. They're not drift compatible? Uh, they're not drift compatible. Yes, absolutely. Uh, which is an original idea I came up with, and definitely not from Guillermo del Toro's Pacific Rim. Um, so, however, though, there seems to be a uh, what appears to be a floating uterus. Oh, that's a very Pacific reference. Fuck you. I don't even have a witty response to that. Just fuck you. <laughs> Get out of <laughs> So, you see what, from the security camera, what appears to be a floating uterus coming towards the door uh and i'm assuming knock on it but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell the character how to do that or how they're going to do that so we'll just start from there you guys see a floating uterus on the security camera headed towards the door of the great tower and that's where we'll begin i wasn't listening i was eating snacks <laughs> well nicole uh... being that you were paying attention my, I mean, I, I uh, my wife Robin uh, has a uterus, so uh, I think I know how to handle this. Um, and I walk over to the door and uh, open it, and I say, "How to there? Uh, how can we help you?" <laughs> I'm here for the audition. <laughs> mm. uh, all right. Well, uh, come on, he come on. I direct her over to our black couch. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, howdy, I wonder what that is a reference to. Now, now, I, I'm all about exploring people, but hold up now. Let's let's just wait and see if she fits in the suit before we make sure she never wants to come back here again. Yeah, we're huge body oh, gamers. Yeah. If you don't fit into the one-size-fits-all Power Rangers suit, <laughs> like, you cannot be part of the the crew. It's like, sorry, we don't, we're not going to go tailor you your own Power Rangers suit. Like, you know, fit in or fuck off. Excuse me, Kelly, these are the Atlantean Rangers, a series of people who have defended Atlantis over the last 2,000 years since they sunk into the ocean. Wow, they sound very powerful. <laughs> They're almost like powerful rangers. Powerful also, Atlantean rangers, or power rangers for short. I also realized that Dr. Gill just totally, like, gendered the floating uterus without asking. And wow. That, really... Like, as wow, much as I, like, Nicole. Yeah, which really, I just like, I feel like just is really in character for Dr. Gill. Like, and I'm just going to roll with it. And that's just going to be how Dr. Gill, <laughs> how Dr. Gill rolls. He's just going to completely continue to misgender everyone and not ask or apologize. Dr. Gill being a huge piece of shit. Wow. What a know, new direction surprising. for this character. It's more likely than you think. I'll actually accept all pronouns as a floating uterus, so no worries, everyone. 
the way God intended. Yeah, Dr. All Dr. Right, Dr. So, Gale, Dr. Gale has no reaction to that. He's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm all right. Entirely well, sure, I'm not entirely sure Dr. Gale knows what anyway. that is. I don't actually care about feelings. I just care. I don't care about gender identities. I just care about profits. So they're here for the audition, and uh, what what are your guys' plans? Like, how are you going to make them audition? Okay, so um, if you direct, I would say that there's nothing talking. to do with me. My character, my my character, Smegma Glands, uh, has a huge obsession with like cowboy culture, because living underwater, um, he's only heard of it. So he can only just kind of like imagine what it's really like. So he's really obsessed with anyone new coming in and just kind of like, just kind of putting on their best cowboy character of any kind. And so like on the, like on the posters that, um, that Dr. Gill so like neatly tied up, like, like, like Dr. Gill made these posters that are saying, you know, um, uh, like non copyright infringing rangers wanted for defense of area not unsimilar to super sentai but you've never heard it from us and like you know really typed up and spaced out beautifully and kind of explaining broadly like come to us with your skills and then what spank mcglans did was go and write on the um on the posters in crayon like must do cowboy bit <laughs> so i really want to see the whole just like cowboy character of of these new recruits. Yeah. And that's what drew me to the poster in the first place. Cause um, I love when someone hand writes on a poster um, just shows like really good organization. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I guess um, being that you were drawn to the Atlantean Rangers with the promise of getting to act like a cowboy, I guess, do you put a, do you put a cowboy hat on both of the, uh, the brains, like both of the, the ovary brains? Yeah. I do. Perfect. Perfect. All right. And, uh, and Smeg, but do you have any props that you need to, uh, to assist with the cowboy bit or are you expecting them to bring their own props? Um, Smeg has like one like plastic black cowboy hat that he could give out. But if the person shows up wearing their own cowboy hat, that could be fine. Okay. Okay. All right. And, uh, Dr. Gill, I what do you wait, no, I could also hand the person like, a cigarette to drip out of their mouth. They couldn't smoke it, but they could just kind of have it dripping out of their mouth. That is an important part of the cowboy static. If you don't have a cigarette, then you have to have chewing tobacco, and uh, that chewing tobacco is a bad time. So, I would recommend the dripping cigarette. You know what? Those things aren't here. Never mind. Well, there's some pretzels. So yeah, yeah. Use yeah. a pretzel as a smoke. All right. So. Uh, how are you going to attempt to act like a cowboy to sell yourself on on the cowboy bit to a, to uh, placate Smegma Glands and make your way into the Atlantean Rangers? This is on you. Is that you're like the my, one auditioning? Is that, the, I'm in, just is that the introduction to my audition? Yes, that but is. That was a question, though. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 need like how are you going to? act like a cowboy like you, you're trying to sell yourself as a cowboy for the atlantean rangers how are you going to do this like what is your plan oh i see um i'm gonna try to harness like a really a really gay um cowboy that's working at a a rural gas station. oh like matthew mcconaughey <laughs> kind of yeah yeah all right so so that's uh matthew that's acceptable so you guys are gonna have to you guys are going to have to travel to the outskirts of town to try to lasso a, a uh, stereotypically gay cowboy working at a rural out-of-town gas station. So using the uh, the resources of the Atlantis Rangers, their giant ship, which I'm sure is definitely not burning taxpayer dollars doing so, you guys uh, head out of town. So, well, wait, so, wait, wait. so the location. audition involves us going to find an actual unsuspecting gay cowboy. Yes, like we're all method acting. <laughs> this is this our, our we're going live, baby. Audition. I yes. I okay. I just want to be clear you what's have so happening. Much faith in me. You're like, let's make this as good as possible. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So, my character, yes, Magma Glans, yes, who usually talks like Keanu Reeves, is now participating in a bit, right? I mean, this is technically a bit. 
Okay, so within the stories, Magma Glans is playing a cowboy named Starch McCollar. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we'll be speaking in that voice. I just wanted to be clear for the audience. We wouldn't want anyone to watch this episode and be confused or put off in any way. Well, I think my plots are very, very coherent and Absolutely. definitely don't go off the rails immediately. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, like, okay. So we're, we're, we're rolling into some kind of like backwaters. You, you guys are in your, like your, your flying craft, right? Our flying cowboy craft. <laughs> okay. So we, we roll up on this person and, uh, uh, I shout out from my ship in my best cowboy voice of, oh, hoy there. Which is things that cowboys say for sure. Yeah. All right. So we actually get our first. I got to grab the dice actually here. Please hold. Yeah. Hold. I need my fucking dice here. Come on. You got one job other than the other jobs I delegated when you showed up. I can pass them. Oh, it's okay. I'll get up. Okay. Ah. Flexible. Yeah. There we go. You have to be to wear those. <laughs> I forgot you were wearing the chaps, Josh. That's great. Oh my god, it's not even visible on camera. Yeah, we we gotta get, maybe, maybe we aim up here so that you can see. Maybe we gotta aim his camera down, or I could turn the wide camera back oh, no, on. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. has it been okay. off? Did you like straddle the back of the couch? Here, I'll go up too because I'll right. it's on. Oh, all right. I'm gonna there. straddle the couch here. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> this is our lower body. You know what straddle means, but this is better. That's all I. That's all I have. I can't actually <laughs> straddle the couch. You can move it away from the wall. That's too late. That's We're already in this position. Oh, man, yeah, this is a. Fe this feels like a more genuine cowboy position. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> all right. So the only problem with this now is that Kelly, can you pass us the uh, dice tray? No, I'm gonna build something. <laughs> Here, I got you. Perfect. Because I'll, I'll hold it for you, but you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to roll some dice to try to lasso this gay cowboy. Lasso me. Perfect. Yeah. We got ropes. We got ropes. Perfect. We got props for everything here. Yep. All right. Shoot, shoot some ropes over my way. <laughs> All right. So I'm rolling. Yeah, you're rolling because you're you're attempting to lasso a gay cowboy oh, here. Okay. All right. So you got holy shit. We got ten subtract. Your body was negative one, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So that's a nine. Rude. You lasso him and. You ever watch like uh, calf roping or anything like that, like a rodeo sport? Oh yeah, every day. All right. Well, I was gonna say you uh, you tie him like a calf rope, but we can just say hog tie. That makes it easier, probably. Oh yeah. You don't just lasso him. You hog tie that gay cowboy, <laughs> mm -hmm. and he is. <laughs> this isn't a hate crime. We promise. <laughs> and you have in a... the moment the ropes landed on him, the cowboy consented to it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a. Uh, you now have a, a gay cowboy all tied up. <laughs> Do you want to add that to your inventory? Yes. Is he coming with me? <laughs> oh my god. Gay cowboy. Yes. Dreams come true. Oh, perfect. Dr. Perfect. says, I'm not sure what we were trying to prove when we came out here, but uh, that was pretty impressive. And I see we just add this floating uterus to the team. Whew, that was easy. <laughs> what do you and, think, uh, Smegma so, so, Um Smegma Glanz, as Starch McCaller, method actor, wanders to himself. Mm, I wonder if we could find some sort of um, some sort of problem to solve or animate a fight within a twenty-minute span. <laughs> and right, you would be because there's a trial up ahead, a difficulty, a good pre-test for this new Atlantean ranger. How do people live in Atlantis with the amount of like enemies and trials residing around every corner? Same way Gotham City does by beating God, up the poor? It sounds terrible. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Let's go beat up some poor folks. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Hill he says in character. Gets hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> full on erection. When you guys say, when, when he hears someone say beating up the poor, he's like, mm, ready. <laughs> ready. Ready to go. You see a small business owner being harassed by three large goons in suits. Sure. So we're going to go. Um, okay, wait. So we're still arriving in our sort of like open decked pirate ship or like we're not in a mech anymore. No, no, no. You're just in a normal ship. 
that transforms into a mech when it needs to. Okay, well, whatever kind of weaponry it. I like, I assume that um, as like people that are just out there to harass the poor, like we're we're probably going to just like who seems poorer, the small business owner or the the people bullying him. That's a good or question. Her. You see that the shop owner has that stereotypical like shop smock on and a nice white pressed shirt and black slacks. And the three business or the three um goons are wearing like those stereotypical mob of black suits with black ties and white shirts. One of them's got his sleeves rolled up already. You can see his arms are very hairy. So is that relevant? Okay, so Smegma Glands. Now your damn business. <laughs> who? Okay, because now we're not doing the audition anymore. I feel like Smegma Glands has dropped the character. Okay, he's dropped his starch yeah. mix. Yeah, I made it in. So yeah, yeah, you're now in the. I'm in. So now I'm being my authentic self, and I'm looking at this kind of showdown happening, saying, "I feel like we should stay neutral. We don't know who's in the right here." I'm I'm still pretty uh, shook by this large erection happening, so I don't really I don't really know what to do. I'm like, this is a, such a weird team. There's, <laughs> there's a lot happening, so I stay silent for now. Yeah. All right, Doctor Gill, it's up to you. Who are you guys attacking? Doctor Gill can see that these uh, fine men in these uh, very fine suits um, are clearly, you know, just trying to exploit this business owner and uh, shake him down for some money and you know i have a lot of experience with that so i can really empathize with that so i immediately assume that they are in the right um and i strat on up to them and i say hey you fellas uh what's going on over here uh, any chance we can strike up a business to you what sort of what sort of racket you guys got going on here the three turn and they go oh shit it's the atlantean rangers and they look like they're trying to resist immediately breaking into a fight because you mentioned a deal. And instead of like acting like they're just there to to buy something, they they immediately like lean into the business owner. They're like, "Well, you see, we're just uh, we're just trying to remind our associate here who pays." for protection around here and who pays for protection around here should be him because he might get hurt randomly. So uh, nothing to see here, really. Nothing yeah. to see here at all. So yeah, that sounds like a standard shakedown. And uh, I mean, I've, I've done a few of these myself and I must say, uh, I think you guys need to be working a little bit harder. I think at least one of you needs to have your suit jacket off and your sleeves rolled up a little more. Um, and I think uh, you need to the be- sleeves like, are rolled up all the way. <laughs> Well, that's just not enough. Now, what you really want to do is, like, accent the bicep, um, but more than physically intimidate them, you really need to intimidate, like, their welfare as well. Um, you need to imply that you know who their family is and where they go to school. Um, I didn't hear any threats about going after their children. Um, just, yeah, just some notes here. Don't take them with a grain of salt, but I am, I am uh, pretty experienced in these things. All right, so uh, to make that speech, I'm going to need you to make a, an understanding roll. Oh, okay. Well, understanding I got. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I got a six. You got a six? All right. Well, they don't seem to take kindly to your advice because they. <laughs> one of them turns around and says, you think you could teach us how to do a shakedown? And takes a swing at you. Okay. Is it the one with the arm hair? It's the one with the arm hair. So I immediately... Typical. <laughs> so I immediately, like, I try and dodge it, and I try and grab him by the arm hair and yank him off balance, specifically with that. All right. That's definitely going to be a body roll, then. <laughs> oh, boy. That's not good. Are these dice only meant to roll ones and twos? I got a six. Another six. All right. You have to appreciate Nicole's honesty on a pair of dice that no one else can see. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. So when you go to yank the arm hair, you instead grab the sleeve that's or, uh, that's rolled up a little bit, and the snap gives way, which throws you off balance, and you start stumbling towards the other two. Okay, uh, can I turn this into a headbutt? 
that's a good question. We'll have to wait until the next round oh. because now it is Smegma turn. What is your plan, Smegma? It is Smegma turn. <laughs> Smegma turn. <laughs> okay, so A, I got poorly medicated ADD. B, this has been very chaotic. <laughs> And C, I was spending some very important time trying to put the heart in front of both of your junk. <laughs> so let me just try to recap this year. Junk? Yeah, your collective junk. Like you mean like our treasure, tr our treasure trunks? Not it's me treasure trunks. It's well, not junk. Yeah, we don't have time on, to get on this tangent. <laughs> <laughs> so, like junk in a good way. So, of the three approaching figures who are vaguely bandit-like. Yes. We have now assaulted one of them who is the hairiest. Uh, well, it's so much not so much that you assaulted <laughs> and that he, he assaulted Dr. Gill. Right, he assaulted Dr. Gill, but we yeah. have done something to the hairy one. He is he's thrown Dr. Gill off balance because Dr. Gill sucks at combat. <laughs> right. And but we're not in a mech, we're in a Yeah, like you're a person large to person. Yeah, no, no, now you're person to person. Okay. Because Dr. Gill drug you over to confront them. I can think of no better time than now to whip out my ventriloquist dummy, Endo. Yes. Um, so, um, who, who is, which of the three is the one that is like most threatening to Dr. Gill? Uh, well, the hairy one? Well, no, because he, he went off balance and now he's headed towards the other two. So they're basically like in equal, equal danger right now. They're both like, you know, the whole puffing up their chest, getting ready to do okay. some swinging. So I stand between the two. I try to jump between the two of them. Okay. And I put my arms up. One of them has endo in it. Yes. Okay. The, the other one, the one that is not endo, I put the, like, which one? Okay, left and right, right? They're yes. in front of me. Which one has the worst vibe? Uh, I'm going to say the one on your left has the worst vibe. Okay. So the one on the right, my right hand has endo on it. My left hand makes a fist. And I go, uh, oh God, I got to say something inspirational. Now I'm about to get fucked up! With, with the, with <laughs> Endo, the dummy, and then I punch the other one in the groin. Okay, so that's going to be, that's going to be a body roll right there. So my, yeah, my, bo my body is zero, so it's going to be a straight roll here. I got a 10. You got a 10? I uh, sure did. Yeah. Nice. Your fist solidly connects with the groin. Of the man who, as he pulls over, you can see he's got some tribal tattoos on his neck, and he is super white. Okay. So just it doesn't I, I change what I do. I continue yeah. connecting. Yes. No. You can do connect. I just want you to know that the person you're hitting is not a good person. Okay, that's good. And <laughs> as this is happening, I want Endo to say to the other one, like, yeah. "This is coming for you too." <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so that's happened now, and as that's happening, um, I've already forgotten your name. Uh, eel? Eel. Eel. Yeah. yeah. Eel. It's, so it's still eel. All right. Eel, you see a pink suit emerge from the, from the ship and fly towards you. And wouldn't you know it? It is designed exactly like a floating uterus <gasps> with two ovary brains. I get the pink suit. <laughs> and it fits perfectly. And as if choosing you right there, you feel like you are an Atlantean ranger. And you're ready to fight. I'm so proud. The only non-yellow suit of any on <laughs> Landon Ranger that's ever lived. <laughs> uh, and uh, so you 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 have your suit on now. How are you going to engage with these three goons that are currently fighting you guys? So I think what I'm going to do is just use some shock value um, to kind of like just we shock them into like paralysis. So yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal the growing. Um, tw uh, twin puppies, uteruses, uh, uh, growing inside the uterus, growing inside me. What's that called? The uh, embryos. Yes, the yes. puppy embryos. The puppy embryos. I mean, so you're the kind of anatomy like, expert. You should tell us. <laughs> I'm, uh, it's the embryos, Kelly. Um, I'm gonna show them, and I'm also gonna kind of like, sh like swing them around a bit. They're gonna be fine. They're gonna be fine, though. Okay. But all right, it's so gonna weird some people out. That that I mean, that would weird me out if I saw it. So I'm gonna need you to roll well, these right here. Weird people out. This is definitely gonna be a psyche roll. All right. Which I think you specialize in, anyway. So. It's a five. Which is good because you have a uh, eight in total then, because that was three, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yep. So, with an eight, you successfully swing one of the two puppies around, which, frankly, 
traumatizes the hairy armed man mm-hmm. who has gotten up from throwing Dr. Gill and just sees a swinging embryotic puppy and just just looks he looked lost like the thousand years a uh, thousand yard stare where he's just like my god this is just like vietnam that would do some damage now just, i'm not sure wait. i i don't want to be smart to jamie says but i'm not sure i'm buying this trauma can you hit him with that just so we really get a sense of what pain is like okay out of 10 how hard do you want it <laughs> 10 10 please, please do not do 10 let's go with a five let's go with a five okay gotta move your mic okay yeah that's a good idea all right this is the reaction to seeing the puppy embryo go <laughs> I can't believe you didn't hold your mic properly for that. Yeah, we have to do it again. No, we do not need to do that again. Do the other leg. Oh Jesus! Even it out. It's gonna open up a whole new fetish. Yeah, you don't here. want it uneven. Like, come on. Oh, this doesn't sake. awaken anything in me. <laughs> so we have one laying on the ground in pain from a groin punch, and one who's just like lost right now. Like he is, he's reevaluating his life, having seen an embryonic puppy swinging through the air. <laughs> so you guys have you guys have one left who is currently facing off against Endo, and uh, Doctor Gill. Being that you were the the first, you will start this round as well. You are still stumbling towards one of them. Yeah. Wait. How has this opponent reacted to Endo? Has they, have they reacted in any way? That's a good question. Can I get you to roll a psyche roll, Kelly? You sure can. Are you really in pain? You're like holding. Oh no no. Like, okay. Good. No no. It's all good. <laughs> He doesn't feel anything ap- anymore, not after doing this many episodes of this show. <laughs> so you said Psyche roll? Yes. That is a three. A three. That's good, right? I'm going to say that the endo voice is not intimidating him at all. In fact, he not only is not intimidated by endo, he slaps endo across the face. Wow. Okay. Whose turn is it? Uh, well, it's Dr. Gill's turn. Okay. Um, so Dr. Gill, after having some time to consider, decides not to try and headbutt this person, but rather to shout into their face, How dare you? I can, I'll can i sue you for this! Um, yeah, all- and trying to, I'm going to try and intimidate them by um, claiming that I have some sort of legal case against them. That's fair. Okay, that's that's going to also be... That's Is gonna be Dr. Under- Gill like a sovereign citizen? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an understanding roll right there. Understanding? Well, now that I know. I know my laws. Oh, fuck's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I swear this is a loaded dice, but it's loaded to make me lose every time. So I rolled a one and a two, but my understanding is two, so I got a five. You got a five? Mm-hmm. He looks at... at he, he doesn't respond negatively or positively. Instead, he just like is trying to recall in like his brief legal studies class he took as a kid, whether or not there is uh, tort law for that sort of lawsuit. And so he's, he's, he doesn't move for the turn as a result of that. And then we move on to Smegma. <laughs> oh. Okay. So at this time, what has happened is my uh, ventriloquist dummy has been slapped by this enemy. Yes. I immediately drop Endo on the ground going, ah! And uh, with my now free hand, I look for the sharpest object I can find. All right. So uh, that's going to be a perception check, which I'm going to put under understanding. So oh, that's a plus one. You're giving me a grand total of seven. A seven. In the goon's pocket, you see a nice, nice silver ballpoint pen. Like the pocket of the one that's currently just slapped. The one that just gun. slapped. Yeah, the one that just slapped Endo. Uh, okay, I'm going to do my best to grab the ballpoint pen and just stab that person repeatedly in the heart. Ooh. All right, so that's a body check right there. That's still not the most violent death we will have seen on here. The ice cream scoops are a <laughs> If I am able to down this person, I will go for the eyes. That's fair. Got a seven. A seven. You manage to obtain the pen, and you get a few good stabs into the chest, uh, but he throws you off before you've done any real damage. I, I can live with that. Art. That's fine. It's just art. Art it, is impermanent. It's it a burning survived. man taught us. It survived. Yeah, good uh-huh. gluing job. So. All right, and then it's on to Eel. Eel is going to see what, what is Eel going to do now? 
<laughs> Sorry, what was the result of that last one? I did. I uh, didn't... Smegma managed to steal the pen, That's a right. ballpoint pen, and stabbed a couple times, but he got thrown off. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's mostly cosmetic damage. So, um, I get inspired by this peripheral rope swinging happening. <laughs> that is. Um, so I decide to turn the like stretchy part of like you know the fallopian tubes into a lasso and uh sorry can we back up a second here yep when you say the stretchy part of the fallopian tubes yeah <laughs> go on we, we also, I mean, we also what i meant was we all know what that is what i meant was like the stringy part of the anatomy which is the fallopian tube it's like yeah. the tube that leads okay, the, the tube egg itself. down. Yeah. Okay, we well, said the stretchy part of the tube, and I'm like, there's a specific there's a... part of the tube that stretches. Guys, like, there's a really I don't know. stretchy I'm here part. To learn. I'm here to learn. Okay, fine. There's a really stretchy part, you guys. It's about an inch long. Mm. It's super stretchy. Mm -hmm. That's the part that I'm using. Okay, All right, on. so you've got that. Right, you've got it. You're using like his a, last So The teenage so, boys tell each other, like, oh, yeah, there's a stretchy part of the fallopian tube, but if you get your dick in there far enough, you can stretch it right out. Feels great. Oh boy. That sounds like a super teenage boy thing to say. Anyway, that would be. If a teenage boy can say the word fallopian successfully, I will. Um, I'll be very proud. Yes. So I swing it, and I guess this would be a body roll because this would absolutely be a body roll here. Let me get the dice up. Come on, body. Jesus, you might be getting shitty rolls, but they are not. 10 right there and you using the fallopian tube lasso successfully wrap the fallopian tube lasso around good message uh around <laughs> the gangster and hog tie him similarly to your uh gay cowboy amazing how many more opponents do we have that's that's all of them did we just do this you guys yeah. we did it uh, yeah the yeah. uh Yes, uh, two, we two captured did it together <laughs> equally at the same amount. <laughs> and uh, the tied up one is going to struggle for a while. And he says, The president won't let you get away with this. And I, I look at this person and say, I am a bad enough dude to contravene the president. And that's where we'll end this one. All right, so if you want to give a really quick, like, teaser of next episode or summary of this episode, or just say something dramatic that happens. Okay. Literally anything that will give me about 10 seconds to get the... Uh... Next time on Atlantis Rangers. Castle's Traps. <laughs> we find out what that gangster meant by... The president, does he mean the president of the United States or the president of Atlantis himself? Could be You'll a president to, of some kind of rotary club. You'll have to tune in next week to find out. Chaps. 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 Chaps.